Bill Maher got dragged on Twitter today, and we're going to check out some of his points with receipts. Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. So I woke up to Twitter absolutely dragging Bill Maher, which whenever I see that, it usually means the person being dragged was right about something, but whatever they were right about was very unpopular. Because in case you don't know about Twitter outrage, they're usually factually incorrect, but super passionate when it comes to whatever they're wrong about. So I looked to see what everybody was so upset about, and there was one clip that kept coming up. I mean, there was this thing about Justin Trudeau sounding like Hitler. Do we tolerate these people? It's like, tolerate these? Now you do that's, sound like no, Hitler. That's... But that's a matter of opinion, and the left can't be mad about that because they just spent four years comparing Donald Trump to Hitler. So it's not really a thing, you know, where you're going to act like, oh, that's so offensive. I can't believe you would compare somebody to Hitler. Oh, and then there was this thing where he was blasting celebrities and athletes about China and being sympathetic to China. But, you know, when it comes to China, we all own iPhones and we ain't giving them up. So nobody gets to be on a high horse when it comes to China. China just is what it is. So I thought a cool thing to do would be like, just check out some of the things that he said in the clip that kept coming up. And let's just fact check some of the stuff that he says. And then I'll tell you at the end what I think the real problem was here. Just for a little bit of context, the, like the general conversation that he was having was about kids and masks and masking schools and that kind of stuff. And so the things he said after though seemed to be what everybody's problem on Twitter was maybe there's a part of the conversation I haven't heard but on Twitter I can tell you that this is what people were upset about because I scrolled for a long time but let's run this clip and see if he's right or if he's wrong on some of the stuff that he's saying here COVID survivability rate of 99.98%. COVID survivability rate of 99.98%. Well, Dr. Fauci himself testified before Congress that the mortality rate for COVID could be as low as 1% when you account for people that are asymptomatic and didn't have to go get tested. Because obviously there's a lot of people that had COVID and we just didn't know it or didn't confirm it. And then more recently, the AP had reported that 98.2% of people that are diagnosed with COVID end up surviving. So again, that doesn't count for the people that were asymptomatic. So I think when he says 99.98%, that is within the realm of possibility. And I'm not going to say he was wrong on that. I'm kind of tired of people acting like anybody's ever going to have the real numbers on COVID. Nobody's ever going to have the real numbers. You guys remember what was going on in the beginning of this. Let's not pretend that we've all forgotten the way that this was mishandled from the beginning. So it is what it is. But I will say, I don't think he's wrong on what he's saying it's just it's not popular mask up like bandits they do look like bandits i'm gonna say that's point for bill maher unfortunately the thing that's getting stolen is their education their sanity and their social skills yeah and you're an idiot if you think that these kids aren't gonna have any kind of repercussions from this if you think that this is this doesn't affect them in any way you're nonsense whether you agree with them wearing masks and you're like i'm willing to risk that it, then I get that. But let's not pretend that this is having no effect on the kids. A study this week from a professor at Johns Hopkins concluded that the lockdowns we all suffered through had little impact in reducing COVID deaths. Okay, that's kind of a big one to get wrong. Now, actually, on that one, he is correct. A professor did say that, and it wasn't peer-reviewed, so it can't actually be used as a Johns Hopkins studies, but if you listen to the wording that he used, he didn't say it was a Johns Hopkins study. Last July, President Biden said, you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Well... I already knew that was wrong then, and now we all do. Now, this is where I have a little bit of a problem with Bill Maher, because Joe Biden did actually say that. The, the various shots that people are getting now cover that. They're, they're, you're okay. You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. But he also said this. If you're vaccinated, even if you do catch the virus, quote unquote, mm -hmm. like people talk about it in normal terms, you're an overwhelmed, and not many people do. If you do, you're not likely to get sick. You're probably going to be symptomless. You're not going to be in a position where, you're, where your life is in danger. Yeah. Which was earlier in the broadcast. But we all know Joe Biden does not exactly have the best memory, and we all look the other way when Grandpa is peeing on himself. But that one, yes, he did say that. Kind of misleading, Bill Maher. Anyway... <laughs> Let's let's move on, because I'm going to tell you guys where I think he really messed up. The former director of the CDC, Robert Redfield, believes COVID originated in a lab and 
Now, our intelligence agencies agree it might have. But for months on social media, it was banned to even discuss it. That's true, and it was annoying. I remember people arguing with me that, about that, and I remember that you couldn't say that on social media. And that was kind of annoying that we weren't even allowed to say it or think it or think it out loud. It's just we had to keep it to ourselves because people would act like it was such a thing. And now everybody just tries to act like, oh, huh. Like, you know, like, oh, you you weren't screaming in my face about that. You weren't typing in all caps going crazy on social media. That wasn't OK. I'm sorry. That wasn't you at all. Look, I'm not saying the medical establishment isn't trying to figure shit out or that they're corrupt, although there is some of that. That's one of the places he messes up because people hate hearing about corruption in the government. They just do. I don't know. Well, because then they feel silly because. They actually, some of them, believe in the system. I really feel like you're a buffoon if you just think any of these people are for us. That's, in my opinion, that's not the case. I know that's not factual, and I can't put that in receipts, but I think it is pretty factual. I just can't put it in receipts. But how about just wrong? Wrong a lot. They were, in some cases, just wrong. And I've said that for a long time. I don't think that they were being malicious. I know some people called it the scamdemic. And if you're from that school of thought, I don't necessarily think you're an idiot for that. I personally think the way that it was handled, I think it was a bunch of people fumbling. And it was a bunch of people like Dr. Fauci, who they did a poll. And only 31% of people trust Dr. Fauci. And I think if Biden really cared about us as much as he says he's cared about us uh, with Fauci and people not trusting Fauci which has been a thing for a while now people just don't trust his recommendations that was one of the problems we even had with getting people vaccinated a lot of people didn't necessarily have faith in Dr. Fauci so if the American public is telling you that that's one of the things holding them back from getting vaccinated and you're so convinced that these vaccinations are what everybody needs then why wouldn't you get rid of the person that seems to be giving less credibility to your vaccinations that you say are so important why why not just say okay you've been in this job since the 80s you've made plenty of money you can do a book deal you can do all sorts of things there are other people that could do what dr fauci is doing and you're not going to convince me that dr fauci is the only one that can do it no dr fauci likes his power he likes his position wrong about hiv which if you're gay and from a certain generation like me i think that you definitely do notice that with everything that we figured out since then which i know he was dealing with something new back then but I've always said Dr. Fauci is a panic. That's what he does. He panics. So I don't think he's the best person for that job. And that's just what it is. And we need to accept that and move on. Wrong about lockdowns. Wrong about kids. Wrong about how you couldn't get it if you were vaccinated. Remember washing our packages? I never participated in washing my packages. I was just like, no, I'm just... Come on, stop being stupid. I, if you bought into that from the beginning, not, not to be mean to you, but scissors, don't run with them. And there's never been any research showing that outdoor transmission is likely or common, yet LA County says we're still supposed to mask up for big outdoor events, like we'll be at the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> supposed to. It's all theater. Watching athletes mix it up on the court and then mask on the sideline. Not being able to touch a menu, but watching them touch my food. Maskless at dinner while sitting, but not standing. And by the way, if Applebee's really cared about our health, they would make us cover our mouths after the food arrived. <laughs> America's fat ass loves Applebee's. I was just at Applebee's for Valentine's Day. And I got to say, it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible, but I'll be there again, so it must have been all right. I'm just asking, how much wrong do you get to be while still holding the default setting for people who represent the science? And that's where I think you really messed up is because people don't want to accept that on some level you've been had. But anyway, the thing that people are mad about Bill Maher for, which gets me, is just the fact that he's a pompous asshole, which, you know, people have always said that about him. And I feel that way about him, too. But just because a person's a pompous asshole doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. And I don't think when it comes to Bill Maher being on the left or the right, I think Bill Maher is on the side of making money. And I think he's on the side of making headlines for his show. And I've considered Bill Maher to be an edgelord for a very long time. He's one of those people that just tries to say things to get people's goat because he knows he needs to make sure that those ratings are there. And that's what it is. As long as he stays in the news, he's got job security, and that's what Bill Maher is about. So anybody that's expecting more from Bill Maher than him just to be a comedian and entertainer is expecting way too much. You guys actually think these people become your voices, and you're like, this person believes in what I believe in, and it's like, no, you're stupid. That person's trying to make money, and they know that if they hit certain
certain buttons with you, then you're going to do what it is they want you to do, which is share their stuff, watch their stuff, defend them, talk about them, have a water cooler conversation. That's what Bill Maher's job is. And that's what people get so mad at him about. But at the same time, he is doing his job well. So yeah, he is pompous. He is an asshole. He is a bit of an edgelord. John Oliver, like I said, people were saying like, John Oliver gets it. John Oliver is a smart guy. John Oliver is an intellectual. If John Oliver were so smart, he wouldn't be here. I always hate when people come here and I'll tell you the truth about the way I feel about people like John Oliver, Trevor Noah, Anybody that has an accent and constantly has a problem with everything while living in the United States, like if you have it all figured out where you came from, then why don't you just stay there? Trevor Noah, what, South Africa wasn't doing what you wanted it to do? John Oliver, what, the UK wasn't what you needed it to be? Your racist queen that we were just hearing about from Meghan Markle, which I don't like her either, but I, I do have a problem with that. The people that come here and want to talk about everything that's wrong with the United States, okay, well, go back home. And I'm not saying that in a zen xenophobic it's because I don't know if you're here to complain if you're here to say everything that's wrong with it then don't be here why would you want to live here I've been to China I've talked about that before and I have no interest in living in China China's cool but for me to adapt from being a United States citizen to being an expat in China and then you think on top of that not that they would allow me to but you think on top of that I would start a show and just be like this is everything that's wrong with China well dumbass why'd you go to China same with Trevor Noah and John Oliver. This is wrong with American politics. Okay, well, take your accent, pack it up, take your kids, your family. That's for John Oliver. Uh, Trevor Noah, I believe, is a single woman. But just pack it all up and go back home because... We don't need you here. You're not contributing, really. Like, you're not even entertaining or funny. I don't know who thinks John Oliver is funny. And Trevor Noah, I really don't know who thinks. Like, I've heard his stand-up. Well, I performed with Trevor, and I still didn't find him funny. Like, you know, I just never. And I know some people do. But Daily Show, pretty much everybody talks about how horrible the Daily Show is. So, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments.